Hello 5.4 ladies and 94.6 gentlemen. In this video I'll be talking about some upcoming open world adventure games that I'm personally very excited about. I'm not gonna talk about the biggest games that you probably already know about like Dying Light 2, Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion or Cyberpunk because well you already know about them so with that said let's get into the list in no particular order. Man Eater. This one releases in a few days on May the 22nd, so I figured it's a good one to start off with. The premise of this game is that you're a shark with a taste for revenge. The shark you play as saw its mother getting killed by a famous shark hunter and is now on a quest to grow strong enough to eventually face him and get its revenge. Yes, that's completely absurd, and yes, for some reason, I love it. You expect a game with this premise to be some trash indie experiment, but Man Eater looks to be far from that. You play in an open world consisting of seven different environments with unique biomes and you're totally free to explore them all. The combat is supposed to have some depth to it as in you'll have to look for enemy patterns and attack or evade accordingly. You're a shark so you'll be able to terrorize humans for no reason and even rack up your notoriety. This game is Shark GTA and my pee pee is ready. Every area will have its apex predator aka boss that you'll have a tough time beating if you haven't leveled up enough. Speaking of progression, there's an unexpected amount of RPG elements in this game. You'll be able to level up ferocity, perception, endurance, vitality, and agility. You'll also feed on other wildlife to evolve, unlock upgrades, and grow in size. All in all, this game looks like a crazy, mindless, insane, fun time. Little Devil Inside is a very cute looking, heavily stylized action adventure RPG. The first thing that strikes you is the visual style, which I'm a big fan of. Since it's been in development for at least 5 years, this style has allowed the game to still look fresh and not become outdated. It's also probably part of the reason they're able to release it on PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, Xbox One, and Wii U which should probably get replaced with a Switch as Wii U is not really a, a relevant console anymore. Don't let the art style fool you though. Little Devil Inside is focused on exploration and survival. Compared to some other games of this genre, the game focuses more on ordinary everyday life. As in real life where a hard week's work is rewarded by a relaxing or refreshing weekend, we wanted to create a world and provide elements within it where you can return back to town or your home after an adventurous mission to regather and re-equip. Unlike some other survival games there will be a hometown or city to return to and rest and prepare for your next mission. The town itself will have its own set of events and elements to interact with. This game is supposed to feel like a long journey instead of quick mindless action. You'll have plenty of time to absorb the atmosphere as you travel, deal with unexpected encounters along the way and battle the environment and weather. When you do get to fight different monsters and creatures, you'll do so using steampunky swords and guns. You'll also be able to upgrade your weapons, armor and vehicle with pickups you get from killing these monsters. You'll be able to play co-op PvE with friends, but there will thankfully be no PvP. The game's been in development for quite a while as the estimated release on their Kickstarter was 2016, but as every other indie game ever, it ran into some troubles along the way. The good news is that the game is still being developed and they post updates on their campaign every few months. Back in January, they said that they were hoping to announce the release window within the first half of the year. I really hope this game gets released within the next couple of years as I really love the art style and atmosphere that they are going for. Gods and Monsters. Okay, you might have noticed a trend on my channel, which is that I have a raging boner for atmospheric eye candy games. Gods and Monsters was revealed at last year's E3, and since then we haven't gotten any new info about it. Its initial release date of February 2020 was delayed, but it's still supposed to come out before the end of the year. Aside from this trailer, the makes me do a little cummy in my punsu. We don't know much about this game. It's an open world action adventure title inspired by Greek mythology. It's made by the same Ubisoft team that worked on Assassin's Creed Odyssey and I'm really excited to see what that team can come up with when they're not restrained by AC lore, style, and mechanics. To a lot of people this looks like a cross between Breath of the Wild and AC Odyssey which sounds pretty good to me.
Next up, we have one of the more exciting games on this list for me, which is Atomic Heart. This game is developed by a mysterious Russian studio, but everything we've seen of the game so far looks phenomenal. It's sort of a blend between Bioshock and Fallout. Set in an alternate version of Soviet Russia, Atomic Heart gives you that lonely dystopian feeling that you get when visiting ghost towns like Chernobyl, and adds to the creepiness by introducing all kinds of weird robotic monster things. You play as a special duty KGB officer that ends up at one of the complexes of the facility 3826 during a massive robot control system malfunction. The robots were originally made to serve the needs of the Soviet industry or to help Soviet citizens in daily life. <laughs> The robots are implemented with a combat program that was supposed to be activated in case of war, which I'm guessing is where the malfunction happened. There's supposedly even a love story between you and another employee of the facility. The studio's website says that the game world consists of huge open world regions full of lush Soviet nature, which I don't know how Soviet nature is different from other nature, but that's what it says on the website, as well as less spacious territories of the facility complex with its secret underground and above ground labs, bunkers, and robotic logistics systems, whatever that means. From everything we've seen of this game so far, and we do have a fair bit of trailers and gameplay, I'm totally, completely sold. Secret Soviet experiments that resulted in supernatural killer machines plus huge abandoned areas equals hype. Skull and Bones. This game was supposed to release in 2018, but it kept getting delayed, so now that we know Ubisoft's release schedule, we definitely won't be seeing it before 2021 if we ever see it at all. The idea for Skull and Bones is modeled after the naval combat of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. This is supposed to be a multiplayer pirate game that's way more fleshed out than anything we have so far. There are rumors that the delays happened in order to revamp the game and make it more like what many were expecting. It originally wasn't supposed to be anything other than naval combat. Your character, so to speak, in this game was supposed to be your ship. The gameplay they released showed different ships, their stats and upgrades, stealth mechanics, and strategic combat. But taking over an enemy ship, for example, was just a cutscene and didn't involve any on-deck gameplay. Now that could still make for a fun and good game, but many people had different expectations. Most people wanted the naval combat of Assassin's Creed Black Flag revamped and the RPG elements expanded now that the game doesn't have the limitations of an AC title. The cinematic trailer as well as some parts of the gameplay gave an impression that you could leave your ship and play as a human character. I can say that for me this looked way more like a single player RPG than a multiplayer PvP based on the trailers. The team has put out statements in the past that they're expanding the game's scope, so we'll just have to wait and see what the final product turns into. Damn. Beyond Good and Evil 2 yet another Ubisoft title on this list and another mysterious production full of delays. The game was first teased with this trailer in... 2008. Yes, 12 years ago. It was officially revealed at E3 2017 and as of yet we don't know anything about the release date, but it's safe to assume this is a next gen title. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is massive in scope and it's an insanely ambitious project. It's an online co-op action adventure RPG. Now I know how much you guys hate when games that look like they make for an amazing single player experience end up being multiplayer. But Beyond Good and Evil 2 is unlike anything you've seen before. Playing solo is absolutely possible, but you'll still have to be online to access the game's world. The world, by the way, is massive. There is literally an entire solar system to explore, and there's seamless transition between person-scale exploration and interplanetary space travel. I know you're having flashbacks of Sean Murray's smiling face right now, but Ubisoft has a massive budget and a much bigger team of people working on this, not to mention way more experience in game development. The game the game is set in a world where India and China became Earth's great superpowers that led humankind's first extraplanetary colonization efforts. In the pre-alpha demo we saw, they explored the Ganesha megacity, which obviously features a lot of Hindu symbolism. There's a big gap between the rich humans living in huge skyscrapers and the poor hybrids living in the slums at the bottom of the city. You'll create a custom character, either human or hybrid, that starts off as a random nobody at the bottom of the pyramid. Over time, you'll work your way up up to become a pirate captain of a powerful interplanetary spaceship. You can choose to climb the ladder by doing anything from delivering pizza 
to robbing banks. The game is also made in part by the community through a program that lets anyone submit their music or artwork to be featured in the game. Honestly, this one probably deserves its own video as there's simply too much to talk about. I love the world design and diversity and I hope that the game doesn't turn out to be shit if it ever even comes out. That's it for this video, leave a comment and subscribe or I will track you down and...